summer before I enter my final term. I've taken a huge interest with soil. Um, I begin to collect many different types of soil and uh, begin to do an experiment with it. So I remember my mom came to my room and said, why are you playing with dirt? And then my sister came to my room and said, you are not planning to eat those, aren't you? I told them, relax guys, this is just an experiment. So I began to mix soil with soil binder, and then I began to cast and mold them in the desired form that I want. I did this because I am very curious with the, um, what soil can, can do and can't do. And I also like the idea of how soil can be ex expressed in, in its most delicate manner. So the notion of soil is often is very significant to relationship of human. Um, in certain cultures, humans believe that um, soil is, provides physical healing and spiritual cleansing. Um, burying always takes place in soil. In these two images, it shows two similar activities, but different type of function. Humans, in these two images, humans are actually buried, but just one is dead and one is alive. So in a way, soil sort of represents these two things. It represents the beginning and the end. Because some living things born from soil and some ends with soil. And soil is often associated, associated as dirt. But to certain human and animals, they believe that soil physically um, clean their body. So what does all this mean? In my research, I always seek to understand the values of humans and their belief and their culture that they have with soil. And in a way, this informs in architecture. So I compose this collage um, of the many elements of my research. And this led me to question the relationship with human, the thoughts and the space they occupy. So while the world, while the soil may seem like it's abundant as they are like skin of the earth. But however, research has shown that the world has only 60 years of topsoil left. This was released probably two years ago, this statement. So I guess we have 58 years of topsoil left. So why is so soil vanishing? Two reasons. Number one is deforestation. Number two is because of heavily chemical farm this which led to soil degradation. So why haven't we heard about this? Probably because soil is soil because soil isn't sexy. People don't always associate um, soil with many things such as health, environment, security, and climate. Thankfully, there are ways to produce new soil, which is true organic waste compost. However, the question is. How much soil can we provide? And how much can we produce? So while a third of the soil is degrading already, um, human population continue to grow and in a rapid numbers. So which makes me think, sorry, which makes me think of like the future civilization's condition. In a way, I see that in the future civilization, civilization we have a lot to do with. Uh, we have to deal with the, ch the loss of food, uh, food growth. We have to deal with um, drought, climate change, and we have to deal with um, limited space. So this is where I begin to research about um, underground architecture. Could underground architecture could uh, accommodate all these problems and provide extra spaces to um, the future civilization? So I begin to um, research what is the ideal underground because this will, after that, will influence in my design in architecture. So under, underground architecture sometimes associate with religion. And um, I like how churches and temples are actually carved and dug within the subterranean. I like the method of construction of digging and carving with the existing landscape. Soil um, underground is also represented as the division of heaven and earth, 
a mythical horizontal line that separates the sky and the earth. The undergrounds provide protections, security, when it comes to, like, for example, World War II or there's bomb, and they believe that it could actually shelter them. The underground is a city. Um, there's something about the underground that separates from the above reality land that provides many possibilities of what could actually happen beneath them. So this led, at this point of my research, I began to question about the value of soil and then how does civilization deal with if soil already extinct. The first thing that came into my mind is that I believe the value of soil will increase and it's going to be so rare and precious. Could soil actually replace money? Could it be a currency? So I began to think about the economics of soil, which probably could give birth to a city. Maybe it's a city that prosper from making new soil to, distribu to distribute around the world. Maybe this city could also celebrate and values about uh, the culture of soil. So I call this city the soil city. So the Soil City takes place in Greenwich Peninsula, London. This is where my context. So in order to understand the civilization, one must understand the history and the context of the landscape. So the interesting thing about Greenwich Peninsula is that it used to be a marshland, and then it became a, um, a gas industry land, and then it became a commercial and residential development. So I always like the idea where the landscape is the architecture of the city. And so I begin to, I begin to merge the previous structure um, of buildings, footprints, and, and the foundation of the, of, what, of the previous building that takes place in Greenwich Peninsula. And then I begin to, um, in an archaeological kind of approach, I begin to excavate and dig this structure out from beneath because I believe um, architecture is informed with the existing and the past um, stories. So when I start excavating Greenwich Peninsula, um, the underground tube and the black wall tunnel that exists beneath the underground is now revealed. And, then it, and this is where I believe the city sort of take place. I begin to insert the, the programs and the spaces that's required for Soil City into the landscape. So this is how it looks like when um, Soil City actually takes place in, in Greenwich Peninsula. So this is how the city works. Behind the city is where we have this vast stretch of landscape of ingredients. This landscape of ingredients accommodates the raw ingredients of um, soil production. And then towards the tips of the peninsula is where the, the production takes place. That's where the soil bank is, the soil depository, the soil plantation, and where there's a soil, soil bay to export to the, the rest part of the world. And the middle of the city is where people live in there. I call it the soil houses. This is what I imagine um, the soil production will look like. Um, those are organic waste truck dumping down organic waste to the chute to the underground and then it spreads out in belts. So I feel like this production could be a very wonderful thing as this wonderful movement that goes across the landscape. This is what I envision of how uh, the entrance towards the underground soil lab and there will be a, a scientist researching about soil and how they can constantly research about how to preserve and conserve this precious soil. This is what I imagine how the soil bank and the soil houses look like. And there's behind there, there is a um, granite tube coming across. And this is how it looks like um, to stand beneath a cathedral of soil depository and above is a step well of plantation. So, the soil city sort of take place during the most stressful period time uh, that human being is actually facing. However, I believe civilization, through the toughest times, civilization are still able to celebrate and believe 
in the culture that they develop along the way. So this is what Soil City is about. It ultimately questions how civilization responds to um, the soil extinction and this natural disaster. But the heart of the project touches on how the civilization still could celebrate and value the culture that they develop along the way through the darkest time. Thank you. <laughs>